Now that we've looked at molecular structures applied to diatomic molecules, let's move on to a discussion of polyatomics. We'll start again with the linear combination of atomic orbitals to generate molecular orbitals. In this case, we'll use the phrase basis set to represent the set of functions that represent the atomic orbitals that we're using to generate our molecular orbitals. We start with a simple polyatomic, water, with three atoms, and we'll use what's called a minimal basis set, and this represents the minimum number of orbitals or the minimum set of orbitals that are necessary to generate the molecular orbitals to adequately describe bonding. In this case, we'll use the valence shell from all of the atoms involved, so we'll use the 1s orbital from hydrogen, one hydrogen atom, we'll use the 1s orbital from the other hydrogen atom, and then from the oxygen, we'll use the 2s, the 2px, the 2py, and the 2pz orbitals. We have six atomic orbitals all together, and that means that we will generate six molecular orbitals in our computation. We will have eight valence electrons because we have one electron from each of the hydrogens, and then, of course, six valence electrons from the oxygen. Now clearly, since we're taking a linear combination of six atomic orbitals, we would have six terms in the summation. However, we will find that symmetry helps a great deal in simplifying the summation. We won't go into symmetry in great detail in this class. Uh, you will learn about it when you take the inorganic chemistry class um, in, future, in the next semester. Um, in this case, in order to define the symmetry, we have to find the molecular plane as being the YZ plane, so the H2O molecule exists in the YZ plane with the Z axis corresponding to the axis that splits the molecule down the middle. One of the rules about molecular orbital theory is that we can only combine atomic orbitals which have the same symmetry. And we use specific labels associated with these symmetries. Again, you'll learn more about those um, in uh, inorganic chemistry. In this case, we generate orbitals which are what we call A1 symmetry, uh, which involve the combination of the 2s orbital on the oxygen, the 2pz orbital uh, on the oxygen, and a summation of the 1s orbitals from the two hydrogen atoms. The A1 term means that the orbitals that we generate are completely symmetric. And again, we'll talk about that in more detail, or you will talk about that in more detail in the future. Um, there is also a B2 um, symmetry, which corresponds, again, in this case, to the 2PY orbital, um, which you'll notice, of course, is the orbital oriented along the y-axis here. Um, and the h one SA and the hydrogen 1SB, but you'll notice in this case that we're taking the difference between the two and these orbitals are anti-symmetric with respect to rotation um, about the z-axis and again we won't go into detail about that here. The final orbital uh, will be the B1 orbital which is just the, the oxygen, the 2px orbital on the oxygen, the x-axis being of course perpendicular to the plane of the molecule um, in this case, because it is not being combined with the 1s orbitals and the hydrogen, it amounts to a non-bonding orbital. Now, it is important to note that because the A1 orbital um, is a linear combination of a four atomic orbitals, we will actually get four molecular orbitals of A1 symmetry, and we'll get two of B2 symmetry. I'm sorry, there should be three of A1 symmetry in this particular circumstance. Again, the reason for the three of A1 symmetry is something that we won't go into um, at this point. Now here's a molecular orbital diagram that shows the combination of these atomic orbitals um, to generate the molecular orbitals. We'll notice that the lowest energy molecular orbital has A1 symmetry 
and is completely delocalized if you look at the, the diagram here, um, which shows that essentially it is mostly a 2s orbital combined with the 1s orbitals on the hydrogens. Um, the next A1 orbital is this orbital right here, which shows that we have a 2pz orbital combined mostly with the 1s orbitals on the hydrogens. Um, it's important to note that the dashed lines on this diagram show which orbitals are combined to form which molecular orbitals. So the A1 orbitals um, show in this circumstance, the A1 shows that we get contributions from um, the 2s here uh, on the oxygen and the 1s uh, from the hydrogens. Uh, this A1 orbital here, as we noted, gets a contribution from the 2pz as well as the 2s and of course the 1s orbitals from the hydrogens. Um, the B2 orbitals here get contributions of course from the 1s orbitals on the hydrogen um, and the 2py orbitals on the oxygen. Finally, of course, we'll notice the B1 orbital where we get a contribution from only the 2px orbital as noted before. Um, this was our non-bonding orbital, um, essentially, uh, which would contain a lone pair of electrons in the um, in, in our simple description of the structure of water. Um, we'll notice we've got two high energy orbitals here, one which has A1 symmetry, one which has B2 symmetry, and in these circumstances these orbitals are higher in energy than the atomic orbitals, so obviously these orbitals are anti-bonding orbitals. Um, We'll note, of course, as we noted on the previous slide, that we had eight electrons um, contributing from the, and these are the eight valence electrons from the atoms involved in the molecule. So we fill up our orbitals with two electrons in each orbital, as we noted before. Um, this shows the basic electronic structure of the ground state of water. This diagram shows the water molecule, the molecular orbitals of water in uh, blown up in greater detail so you can get a better idea uh, about what they look like. And we'll notice, of course, the lowest energy orbital, the A1 orbital, shows a completely delocalized electron distribution, um, as we noted, um, as we have noted earlier in talking about the stabilization of these orbitals. Generally, the more delocalization of electrons, the lower the energy of the, of the orbital. So we end our introduction to molecular orbitals uh, theory for polyatomic molecules with this description of the water molecule. The next video will deal with the applications of molecular orbital theory to pi electron systems.